Professor Alex Edmonds. Be back here to share this special day with you. So it's been almost seven months since I last gave a lecture at this incredible place. So what I want to do this afternoon is to share with you my perspective on life beyond water. So you spent this afternoon with your cohort, and your cohort contains some of your closest friends at water. But what does it mean to be part of a cohort? Because this is actually a term very unique to water. At Harvard they call them sections, and at LBS they call them streets. So how do I find out what cohort means? So if I was a normal person, I would buy a dictionary and look it up in the dictionary. But due to my repeated abuse of the student faculty meals program over the six years that I taught here, I'm not used to spending any of my own money. So um, what do I do? So I couldn't buy a dictionary, but I could look this up on the free online dictionary. And this is what it says. It says cohort, a group of persons sharing a particular statistical or demographic characteristic, e.g. the cohort of all children born in 1980. But this doesn't seem to apply to, to wars at all. Because first off, I don't know of any of you who's old enough to have been born as early as 1980. <laughs> Except for Campbell Marshall. <laughs> Um, I don't think you share any particular demographic characteristics because you're all different. And isn't this what Wharton prides itself upon? The diversity of the student body. Well, you were indeed different when you started this incredible journey two years ago. You came from New York. You came from Shanghai. You came from Sao Paulo. And you were bankers. <laughs> you were consultants. You were soldiers. And you all wanted different things out of your time at water. I want a hedge fund job. I want to be club president. Or I want an MRS degree. <laughs> the operative noun was I. But suddenly somewhere back in preterm, you met each other for the first time. And each of you had a moment when you realised that you were part of a community. Because each of you realised that even though you shared no particular statistical or demographic characteristic, you all shared a common attitude. You all came to Wharton to grow and help those around you grow. And this attitude would bond you for the next two years. Each of you had a moment when I became we, when a group became a cohort, when 12 cohorts formed the class of 2014. You were no longer New Yorkers or Shanghaians or Sao Paulans. You were no longer bankers or consultants or soldiers. You are now warthogs, wildmen, wildebeests. You are now leadership fellows, venture fellows, student life reps, Follies Company, shot girls, <laughs> huntsmen. Comrades, companions, friends. Because far better than the free online dictionary is, of course, Urban Dictionary, which gives the definition of cohort, which is much more apt for water. A person that is a good friend. <laughs> but in two days' time, it will be all over. Because in two days' time, you're going to have commencement, and commencement is the end of your time at water. And you'll go back into this world where people fend for themselves, and you just don't have the same sense of community that you have at water. You might look back on your two years here as being like a two-year crash diet. So it's good when it lasted, but then you revert back to your old ways once it's over. But hang on a moment. I don't need a dictionary to tell me that the word commencement does not mean an end. The word commencement <coughs> means the beginning. Commencement will be the beginning of the rest of your lives as Wharton MBAs, as you go out into this world as ambassadors of our Wharton brand and start creating some cohorts around you. Because while you can only be a Wharton MBA candidate for two years, 
you will be Wharton MBAs for life. So the goal of this talk is not to give a feel-good or pump-up speech, but instead to give you some practical advice about life beyond Wharton. And if you remember only one thing from the rest of the talk, it is this. Your Wharton MBA will be defined not so much by what you achieved in your two years here, but how it affects the rest of your life going forward. Your Wharton MBA will be defined not so much by what you achieved in your two years here, but how it affects the rest of your life going forward. Because Wharton is not a place, something that you have to leave behind. Wharton is an attitude, something that you can take with you. Which is why I know that for everybody in this room, this will not be a temporary crash diet. This will be a permanent metamorphosis. Your MBA can stand for a metamorphosis by attitude. But just like a language, which quickly fades if you don't keep practicing it, this Wharton attitude will only be ingrained in it inside you if you start practicing it from the first day you graduate from Wharton. So what does this Wharton attitude consist of? I'd like to highlight three things. Community, courage, and commitment. So let's start with community. That's a word which is often overused and happy, but the Wharton community means something very special. It's about service, it's about self-sacrifice. Because in the Wharton community, we help each other without expecting anything in return. Now, in good middle class living, people still help each other, but at the back of their mind they're thinking, well, I might get something in, in the future. But in Wharton, we help each other without doing the, this net present value calculation. This is why many of you second have already done with recruiting about a year ago after your internship, but you gave up your debt to help first years with their case interview. This is why in this theatre we have some amazing ice hockey players who gave up their evenings to coach D-League beginner ice hockey teams. This is why we have the future leaders of this world, you guys, who gave up your weekends for rebuilding together to help your neighbours in Philadelphia who are less fortunate than yourselves. Now, in good middle class living, if people ask you to help them, they come up to you, you'll probably help them. But in the water community, people go out of their way to actively look for opportunities to help others. And so this is an attitude we can practice outside of Wharton, just going throughout life, practically thinking about ways in which we can enrich the lives of people around us. The second attitude is one of courage. You all came to Wharton for your stretch experiences. You came to push yourselves outside your comfort zone, to take a shot, to give it a go, to test it out, to try it out, to climb the mountain, to go with an extra mile. And I have watched with pride, as some of you guys who've never done finance before, you came to my accelerator finance class, got cold called incessantly for six weeks, and crushed it. I have watched with pride as you guys have stepped into a boxing ring for the first time, put on ice skates, or got up and done a stand-up comedy routine in front of the rest of your classmates. Now these opportunities to stretch yourself will not be on tap once you leave water, but they will still exist. You'll just have to work particularly hard to seek them out and carry this attitude of courage at all times. The final one is the attitude of commitment. So Warden, it's really easy to sign up for loads of things and then to flake out. But what's really impressed me so much about your year <laughs> is that you haven't. You've shown tremendous commitment and professionalism in everything that you've done. Be this putting on something big like Follies or Wix or Dance Studio or something more humble, such as being a good learning teammate and taking your fair share of the load. Your word is your bond, you're committed to everything that you do. Because in your first job after all, and let's face it, many other people could do the jobs you're going on into, but there's thousands of other MBAs who could do a merger model, or could do a PowerPoint presentation. So it's going to be hard to differentiate yourself by what you do. So differentiate yourself by how you do it. With the enthusiasm, the drive, the energy, the joy, the commitment, with which you go about things. Let that be your personal brand. Let that be your differentiator. Because before the lights went down, I could recognise what cohort most of you were in by looking at the t-shirt that you're wearing. Wouldn't it be awesome if the rest of the world could recognise who is a Wharton MBA by the attitude that they carry, by the commitment that they show, by the community that they create around them, 
and the courage that they bring to bear. So take a moment to look around the rest of this room. You know? Start, but look around. What do you see? So I expect you want you think I want you to look at the people who are here, your cohort, but I don't. Look at all of the empty space in this theatre. Because we can just fill, fill this entire space with people just as qualified as yourself. We get thousands of great applications every year. But we didn't. We chose to fill this space with you and you only. In your two years here, you had some tremendous opportunities that thousands of people around the world wanted, but they did not get their knowledge. So it's your responsibility to make sure that what you learned at Wharton stays with you and does not fail. Because in your future lives, you're going to come across tons of people who would have loved to come to Wharton and sit in these seats, but they never got the chance. Bring the attitude of Wharton, community, courage, and commitment to those people. Each of you right now can think about what is the one behaviour I'm willing to commit to right now to bring the attitude of water to all of those people. But take a look around the room once again, and now notice the people who are here. Your friends with whom you've walked these incredible two years. Keep in touch with those people. And this is surprisingly very hard. Over my six years here, I built some amazing friendships which I thought were so strong. We were going to keep in touch after water. But these friendships wither and fade because people get busy and there's, there's just the geographical distance. So my strong piece of advice to everybody here is to plan your water friendships just as diligently as you will plan your professional relationships and professional life. And this could involve something very simple. So in my old ice hockey teams, we have a mailing list where every month somebody from the team is scheduled to send out an email update with what they've been up to. But these scheduled email updates will then lead to spontaneous banter and back and forth between the rest of the team. And I'd strongly encourage you to do this, be this in your sports team, your cohort, your tall shift sailing leadership venture team. Now the same for me may seem mechanistic and formulaic, but you would plan a business meeting because the business meeting is important. If you don't plan it, the important stuff gets swept aside with lots of urgent stuff which hits you every day. So what could be more important than keeping in touch with these incredible people? In two days' time, you will no longer be at Wharton. But this Wharton attitude and these Wharton friends will be with you for the rest of your life. And when you see each other again, on the streets of New York, or Shanghai, or Sao Paulo, and you share with each other a smile, or a hug, or a handshake, you will look around at those passing. But you will share something that no one else shares. You will know something no one else knows. And you will have something no one else knows. Because you went to fucking water. Yeah.